Hey, book lovers. My name is Em, and I want to talk about books. And cats. Books, books, cats, cats. Welcome back, book lovers. So things are shifting a bit in Books and Cats land. I am currently trying to combine my podcasts together, possibly on a substack where I can provide a bunch of other fun content that I've been wanting to do but haven't really had a place for. This could include some video book reviews, movie reviews, cat and dog videos, just all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned for posts about that. I will keep you guys updated once I figure out what I am doing. In exciting cat news, I have started a collection of fun cat t-shirts. I didn't really plan on doing this. It just kind of happened. It started with my husband bringing me a t-shirt from like a clothing swap that they did at his school. And it has, <laughs> it has a cat pouring out some milk, and it says, for the homies, and it makes me giggle every time I see it. (laughs) So it started with that one, and then I kept seeing, like, funny cat shirts and buying them. But, you know, it's on brand, I guess. So my top two favorites are definitely the for the homies one, and then the other one, which might actually be my, like, top favorite if I had to choose one is a black t-shirt that has a white cartoon cat on it, and it says, fluff around and find out. (laughs) I love it so much. I've been learning about graphic design lately, and I think I might need to try making my own fun cat shirts. I mean, why not, right? Other people have to be buying cat shirts, too. It can't just be me. So I guess stay tuned for that, too. I'm going to have a lot of updates. (laughs) But for now, let's talk about books. I am super excited about this one. It's called A Stolen Child, and it is the newest book from Sarah Stewart Taylor. You may remember her from previous episodes, Season 2, Episodes 6, 19, and 21. Episode 19 includes an interview that I got to do with Sarah, which was just lovely. She is a fabulous person and a talented writer. I highly recommend checking out all of her books. I will put a link to her website in the show notes. And now we continue with yet another fabulous book. Let's talk about A Stolen Child by Sarah Stewart Taylor. I just so love this series. I know I say it every time. We're still following Maggie Darcy, who is a detective living in Ireland now, with her boyfriend Connor, his son, and her daughter Lily. If you've listened to previous episodes about Maggie Darcy books, these characters might be familiar to you. Her family is less central to this story, though they do pop up occasionally and they have a small side plot that features some mystery photographs that they find in the wall of their house when they're renovating. But the main plot revolves around Maggie and her job with the guards. She is currently on patrol but is hoping to be moved up to detective soon, She had to take a step back in her career to be able to work in Ireland, but her friend and colleague, Roly, is still trying his best to keep her involved. He brings her in to help on a new case. A young woman named Jade has been murdered, and her young child, Laurel, is missing. Time is of the essence, and the list of possible perpetrators is growing. There's the first assumed suspect, Jade's ex and the father of Laurel, He seems suspicious, but he was in France during the time of the attack. There's Jade's sister, Nicola, who seems a bit defensive, reserved, angry, and a bit resentful. Her younger sister got to leave their small town and go be a model while she was having babies and charged with caring for their ailing mother. There's a whole slew of suspicious locals, too. There's vagrant teens, a well-known criminal, a handful of neighbors— The unraveling of the story and each character's role in it is just brilliantly done. The pacing is fantastic, it's fast enough to keep your attention, and it just makes the book unputdownable. 
this was definitely a one sitting read. And each piece has a purpose in the tale. Sometimes I find that with thrillers, an author will throw in a few characters that are just completely red herrings and have absolutely nothing to do with the plot. Each character in this book holds a piece of the story, and most of them hold a little bit of the guilt, too. They are all involved in some way, and all of them have some level of reasonable suspicion. Any of them could have been the one. And it never seems forced or unbelievable. Sarah Stewart Taylor builds wonderful characters. Each is fully developed with their own personality and backstory. Even when we only get a little glimpse of it, the language is natural and it flows conversationally. A Stolen Child is another brilliant thriller by Sarah Stewart Taylor, and I highly recommend it. You won't be able to put it down, I swear. <laughs> the ending was surprising, too. I had come close to guessing who done it, but at the same time, I was totally off. This book keeps you guessing right up to the end. It is just absolutely fabulous. And speaking of fabulous, this week's quote involves being fabulous, and it's from one of the first style, music, and attitude influences that I had in my youth. The incomparable Cindy Lauper. And the quote is, When I sing, I don't feel like it's me. I feel I am fabulous, like I'm 10 feet tall. I am the greatest. I am the strongest. I am Samson. I'm whoever I want to be. And what have I wanted to be for my entire life? A writer. I've been working at it pretty seriously for a long time now, and I have shared a few of my past books with you. But nothing from the super early days. <laughs> there is one that I would like to revisit, but it is a little frightening as well. It's called Do You Remember Ella? Anyway, in the spirit of spooky season, I'm kind of bringing back story time with M. It's going to be part of the substack. It's going to have to be behind the paywall. It's really cheap. I tried to keep it as reasonable as possible, but if I'm going to keep podcasting, I have to find some way to make it work. <laughs> So please forgive me. I will be sharing all of my books on there. So if you think about it that way, you're getting really cheap books. Anyway, for this one, I feel a little conflicted about sharing it. Part of me wants to share it. It is the earliest available book that you can find by me. There were a couple others earlier than this, but I took them off Amazon because they were too embarrassing. <laughs> They got put out when self-publishing was very new and when I was very new to writing an entire book and editing, <laughs> period. <laughs> so those went away. No one will ever see them. And the first one that I felt confident enough in to leave it up is Do You Remember Ella? It is the only time that I have attempted to write a full book-length horror novel. I've done short stories in the horror genre, but since I wrote this one, I haven't really been able to make anything go longer than a novella, basically. Until very recently, that is. I am currently working on a couple of books, two books at the same time. It is incredibly complicated, <laughs> but both of them are in the horror genre. I have written a ton of stuff in sort of the fantasy genre. And while I do love magic and all the creativity that comes with it, I wanted to challenge myself to write something that is just set in reality, at least so far. <laughs> we'll see. And I had these two separate ideas that I think can actually be full-length books. So I'm trying again. Why not try some horror? I love it. <laughs> and speaking of horror, if you join the Substack, one of the things I am offering is going to be videos called High Horror, where I'm going to be in a sort of elevated state of mind and watching horror movies that I have missed over the past however many years. There are so many good ones that I have not seen, so I'm going to be doing reactions to those, and it'll be fun. There's going to be all kinds of fun stuff on there. I definitely recommend checking it out. And there's a bunch of free stuff on there, too. So check it out before you commit to anything, you know? So anyway, it seems like the perfect time to bring back my first horror novel, 
Do You Remember Ella, which was first published back in November of 2014. So it's been almost nine years since I published my first non-embarrassing book. And I say that, but I haven't read it since I published it. Once I finish a book, I move on to the next, and I usually don't revisit them unless I decide to share them here or if I'm recording the audiobook version. So it may actually be embarrassing. I really can't remember. (laughs) I remember bits and pieces, and I will admit that I am nervous, but let's find out together just how bad it can be. (laughs) It might be good. Who knows? It was definitely a different time in my life. I thought about writing in a different way. I was trying things that didn't really end up working. It was very experimental, and I was pretty new to, like, making a go at it. And maybe that's why I like this book so much, because it was the first time where I was like, yeah, I can do this, and I'm going to, at least sometimes, work toward my dreams. And it's been off and on that whole time, but more and more I focus on it, and I've seen lots of improvement. And now we're going to take a step backwards. (laughs) Anyway, so check out the Substack if you want a chapter of Do You Remember Ella every week. It's going to be an adventure. (laughs) Honestly, I might also do some reactions to that. I might post a chapter and then do a reaction video. I don't know. I'm excited. So I guess that is all for this episode, book lovers. Thank you for joining me in my books and cats world. I hope you find your fabulous every day, even if it's just for a moment, because you are absolutely fabulous. If you enjoyed the show, leave a rating wherever you listen to podcasts or share the love on YouTube, Instagram, or come check out Substack. That's my new, uh, my new venture. (laughs) And every little bit helps. I am so grateful for the support. And until next time, book lovers, keep reading. Media Production.